G'day, g'day everyone, welcome back to Point Party, the Twitch stream designed to turn a game into gimmick into a text write-off. I'm John, and we're back at Cyber Myth Studios again. And you can see, it's not my code. I've got somebody else's code up. This is some code I found online, which apparently works. Well, not apparently, we did. We tested it last time, it works. Like, we can run it through test three right now and see it work. And actually, watching it work, it seems like, I mean, you know, is it the most optimized code? Probably not, because again, we're not doing things in parallel, but it seems like doing things one at a time seems to be kind of the way to go. Which is kind of interesting. And then it ran, oh, wow. All oh, right, no, no, now it's running through test one. Okay, so it ran through test three, but you can see what it did, it was, and let's might as well sit it on test one and just watch it. Because just watching it without even like seeing this code is kind of like interesting. Because you can see it's got So that's yeah, so that's what's that? That's file. Okay. So you've got an exa that's grabbing the file. Hang on a minute. So it creates a one. Okay, and that's grabbing the file. Right. And then it copies F to X. Yeah, so it, but it seems like they're doing it one at a time. What are they doing one at a time is the question. Hang on. I want to step through this. I just want to see what they're doing. So they sent us, okay, so that one gets the word ghast, right. And then it grabs this. And starts looking for the word ghast, okay. Yep, and goes back. And then copies that over, okay, drops that, grabs that. Okay. Seek one. Multiply F by negative one? What? Okay, hang on. So, where is it going to find 2006? Um, there it is. Okay. It's true. So it's six one copies that F multiply the value of F okay by negative one so it's sending over a negative it's sending this value over a negative that's weird okay and who's it sending it to it sends it over here what are they doing with it what are they doing with it Stick back, could be M to X. Okay, test of X is equal to minus 9999, right? Add the value of X to F and write that back into X. Okay, uh, add the value of M to F and write that into T. Wait, what did it seek back 5? Well, that's back to the start of the file. Copy that into there, okay, copy t to there, so that's your sense value. And you've got two negative values, what? Go back, copy m to x. Okay, I want to kind of go back through that again, hold on. So we do that, and that's gonna, yeah, hang on. So this one's gonna look for some code. It's gonna look for that, it's gonna, yeah, move through that. Grab that and then start looking through again. Sends over a negative value. Oh, it's sending the sense at the same time. Okay, and it sends a negative value of that. Ah, that's where that five's coming from. Okay, while this one is busy doing some maths here, okay. So why negative value though? Test of this 9999, true jump to LB1. Repl or two. Uh, okay. 
uh, mode, copy it, copy m to x, right, link 801, drive 220. So once it gets an, okay, so that's it triggering, okay, so wait a minute, so when this one's done, is this going to send over 9999, is that what's going to happen? So we'll do all of this, uh, Okay, so what happens when it gets to the end of the file? Just all right, jump to LB3, right? Okay, go back, do this, copy M to X, copy M to X, right? That's going to be the word ghast. Go back to global, go to 802. Oh, I see. Right, it sends. Oh, right. Okay, so we own. So this one's whole job is to literally just find ghast. And then look through for ghast. But then why is it true jump? To, oh, I see. And then it sends over a 999 to say that's all those values. So it's going to send over. Oh, so just ghasts, amount paid, amount owed. Subtracting the amount that they were paid from the amount that they were owed. So it does it individually. Okay. Okay, so now it's gonna go and grab some numbers. What number is it looking for? 3004, okay, so it's just found it. Oh, and it copies them straight, okay. Okay, what are you doing then with the straight numbers that you've just copied over? What are you doing? Add the value of x to f, it gives you a negative value. Add the value of m to f. Okay, copy that to t, okay. So now you've got, yeah, okay. Go back to the start of your file and overwrite those two values. Okay. So then what do you do when you get to LP1? You create that and then fall through into here. And now you're looking for the m to x, true, otherwise, copy the value of x to f, no, add the value of x to f, write that back into x, add the value of m to t, go back 5, so it's just adding, oh, okay, so it's taking, pay. is it taking payables a negative value then, is that what's happening, hang on, so... It did that, and what is two doing? Two is grabbing a word. This of x is equal to. Okay, hang on a minute. Wait, oh, hold on. No, it's over here. All right, sorry, it's two. Uh, all right, yeah, and then it looks for the word. Got it. And when it finds it, it just straight copies it over. Okay, so it's sending whole numbers from payroll and negative numbers from payable. Right. So then, what do you do once you get all those numbers? So, okay, we got that one, and then we get this one. Where does this jump to? LB2, okay. Well, let's see what you do. I'm gonna just skip ahead. Okay. So you copy F to X, and what's in your F register right there? What's in F right now? Okay, okay, so now you've got two whole numbers. Right, which you've done by adding the numbers, adding num. Right, so you had started with you created negative values and you added to them. Okay, copy F to X, copy F to T. Swizz the value of T that number. Oh, okay, and write that into F. Swizz from T the last two. Okay, go back. Oh. Oh, hello, yes! That is so much better. I didn't think about that. I was, I was trying to be clever with maths. That was my problem. I was trying to be clever and I was like, oh, you know, if you divide it by a hundred, that's, that's your cents, that's your dollars, because there's a hundred cents in a dollar. And for some reason, uh, unknown to me, because I'm not, uh, I'm not like my great uncle who has a PhD in mathematics, um, I, I'm the exact, I am the exact opposite. 
when it comes to mathematical prowess. Like it, it, it kind of just skipped me in my family. Like my grandmother was really good at maths. My great uncle, like I said, is a PhD in mathematics. Um, me, I'm, I mean, I'm sitting here in the kiddie pool and like I'm wearing floaties. Cause like, yeah, I'm in the shallow end of the kiddie pool and I'm wearing floaties. That's where I'm at in mathematical prowess. Um, but that just that just solves the problem. It's like, yeah, you know that's that's your dollar value and you know that's your cent value. So instead of getting fancy with the maths, just pull those two numbers out. Oh, oh my god. Oh yeah. Oh, that's just so good. Oh my god, I'm in love. I'm in love with this. This is great. Okay, I love it. I don't know who this person. Thank you. Um, person I found through Google. I don't know who you are, but if you recognize your code, I love you. You're great. And I, I, I owe you a beer. Unless you're not old enough to drink beer, then I'll, I owe you, I don't know, I'll buy you a, a can of Coke or something. Um, yeah, definitely. Or, 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 or a strong cup of tea. How about that? Okay. So then we add that value. Yeah, that's, yep, totally. And then copy that to, copy F to T. Oh, right, yeah, yeah, and then you've got the sense value, so yeah, and you want that, so there's your, there's your dollar and cents values, then you go back. Test if T is less than zero. Okay, I don't know what's going on there, but okay, okay. Uh, and a false jump to E, otherwise what are we doing? <laughs> Let's assume that's a negative value, I just want to see what this is doing. Um, so it'd add a hundred to the value of F and write that into T. Okie dokie. So we'd, so we'd take that. If it was negative 12, wait, hold on. Subtract the value. Okay, subtract from X1 and write that back into X and then go back. Okay, otherwise we're gonna jump down to E. Hold on. Oh god, now we're getting- now I'm lost again. Now I'm lost again! Okay, so where was that hell happening? It was here, right. Otherwise- oh, I see, and then we copy F to T again. Right. Right, oh, of course, because we did some testing. Yeah, 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 that makes sense. Yes, okay, right, and that's why you- okay, got it. Right. And we add a- okay, copy F to T. Wipe the file we're holding. Go to 801. Grab that file, go all the way to the end of it. Oh, oh, that's clever. You've already done this bit. Oh, I didn't see that happen. Okay. Okay. And then you're going to copy in those dollar values. Hold the phone. And then you're going to... Oh, I see. Oh, so instead of jumping to an end, you just have an error out. Oh, that's hella dope. Okay. Yeah, it goes, oh, I can't find that file. Yeah, and then blows up, so you don't have to have a halt step. Oh, but Swizz, okay. Okay, I'm feeling reinvigorated. Okay, Swizz. Not entirely sure how the under floating stuff works, because if it's like... Okay. All right. Well... You, this, I have never had, like, okay, even if we get rid of, like, even if we say, okay, of all the actual solutions, one, two, three, there's five. This is, like, insane. I've never done, I've never had this many new solutions. I've never had to be like, start over again. But we are, because, like, that is just so fundamentally different to how um, this code I was trying to work on last stream works, that there's no sense in, like, trying to make that work, because it's just not. So we can't do things in parallel, which is what I wanted to do. Um, yeah, that's just not going to happen. So, what, so, okay, so then we want to have it all happen one at a time and we want to have two separate exes doing stuff. So, Okay. It seems like the first thing they were doing in that other one. What were they here? Let's go back to it. The online one. Uh, what was the? F what was actually the first thing they were doing? Record two. Okay. Uh, oh, which one? You oh, wait. Hold on. How many? How many eggs has literally just got made? That one made oh, a zero. 
Okay, wait, hold on. Oh, right, because it made one right out of the gate. I see, okay. And then it made another two, then it made two, which is that one, got it. And that one is down here, and that's going in there. Oh, okay, so what are you doing then? What earth are you doing? You're just gonna do that, and then you're gonna wait for stuff to happen. So who's who's getting the date from 804? Oh, so you're sending over Ghast. Yeah, and then that's gonna do stuff, and you're gonna say, okay, well, I found the value, and then you're gonna do this stuff, and then you're just gonna send a bunch of numbers over. Okay, and you're gonna send a bunch of, well, when it finds the numbers. The numbers, basically. Okay. So then it finds the numbers. Okay, so you found a number, and you're like, yay, I found the number, so we're gonna go along, and we're gonna make that a negative value, send that over, make that a negative value, and send that on over, and then we're gonna keep looking on through for more numbers, which we don't find. That's okay. Once we're at the end of the file, what are we doing? We drop that file, we go back, we go to local, we get the next value. Okay, we go into here and do literally the same thing all over again. Okay. Right, drop that. Yeah, and then kind of yeah, run the whole gimmick again. Okay, and then send just send the values over straight and just keep looking. Okay, so you're not doing any multiplication stuff either. You're just gonna look for the numbers and send them straight. Okay. So then who's doing, ah, oh. <laughs> well, it just so happens it's right here. So one's doing it. So hang on a minute. Cause one is being made right out of the gate. So mark one. Oh, I see. So they run all, they do all of this. So what have they got? When they get, by the time they get to this point, what have they got in their hands? Okay. So they're dropping the file they're holding. Okay. But they've got trash. Wood. Okay. So they're going to copy over the co corporate name, right? They're going to drop the file they're holding. Then they go into 801. Grab the file. Oh, I see. Go to the end. Go back to... Add the value. Add to the value. Oh my god, that is so much cleverer than what I was doing. I was copying and then adding and that's stupid. That's the... Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. Going forward. Putting that number in. Copying over. Oh, I s oh, of course, because this doesn't need a date. Right. Okay. And then it just does that. Okie dokie. Grabs that. Goes to the end of the file. Puts the ID in again. Okay. Grabs. Goes back. Oh, because you can take it out of the. F oh my god, that's brilliant. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And then you do that. And then you do that. And you. Pop it back in, right? Then you go back, then you grab this file. Then you go back. Okay. Don't know why you're doing that though. Like, I mean, that's a few extra instructions that I wouldn't I wouldn't have bothered with personally. I feel like at this point, grabbing the file is prudent, but then I would have wiped the file and then halted, is how I would have done that. I wouldn't have done anything else. Um, Because, like, you don't need to preserve that file. I mean, except for, like, mad flex and reasons. To be, just to be like, but I can. So why shouldn't I? Like, I get that. Um, but for the sake of raw efficiency, like, I would have just done link one... Well, actually, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because if I'd have done wipe here... Like, all I would have done is replace that instruction here. Replace link one with wipe. Yeah, no, it's still worth doing because it would bring the activity score down to 14. That's why it's worth doing. It doesn't change your size limit, but it does uh, change your activity score. 
if we do that. So that's that 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 is probably how I would do that one. But that's cool. Look, I'm not, you know, that's this is the beauty of like analyzing other people's code. It's like this is a solution that works, but like you know, it's not the, like the beauty of games like this is like there is no one solution. This is there's not one way of solving a thing. Um, there's a bunch of different ways, and this is one in a myriad, and it's great. I love it. Okay, it's Swizz. Oh, I can't get over that. I honestly can't. Like, that's just brilliant. That's just going to solve so many headaches. <laughs> so many headaches. Like, oh my god. Okay. Okay, but so that makes sense. You, you are, you're doing that while this one is sending over stuff. So, that means it's got to be happening... Okay, I think I understand what's going on. Okay, so the first thing it's doing is this exa isn't like part part of what's I've got to rethink about here as well. It's kind of just fundamentally under changing the way I'm understanding um, the way it's using exas. So normally, what I would do is I would have this exa be my quote unquote primary exa, and 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 use it as sort of like a central server for stuff. But that doesn't really look like that's that's not you know that, that oh, it is kind of the case but for me that would mean that all information go like all information that needs to be communicated goes to and from that exa but that's not the case because if that was the case for me what i would do is i would do grab 300 like right here and have this exa disseminate the information but it's not this exa is only taking in numbers because the first thing they did was like create a new exa to handle that which i don't think I just don't know if that's the most efficient way of doing that still. Um, like we could just create an exa whose entire job is to like take the numbers still. Um, and that might be slight, well, it, it'll, it'll, it's, it's more efficient activity wise. Because instead of our activity score coming coming in at two right out of the gate, literally right out of the gate, it's one. So we grab the file, come in, replicate an exa, and just have that exa like make its own file for accepting information. Um, but yeah. Okay. Mm, but I, I, but I can see, I can actually see the logic in what they were doing. So let's do it. So we're going to create, and we'll call, let's call this one uh, keyword, because it'll, yeah, 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 I know, yeah, I know, Mark, keyword. And their whole job is to hand out keywords. So they're going to grab three hundred and link eight hundred. Okay, we're going to make this one. I'm going to go in. And then... Not quite sh So this one's going to, like, take information in, I guess. Um, is it, though? Like... What was their primary exit doing? Actually. Triple one... Okay, make a file, copy zero to F. Oh, I see. And then it goes into here and then, okay, then it accepts information. Okay, why are we copying over zero though? Oh, cause you need a value to add to, right. Okay, and we start with zero. Okay, right, so that's, Otherwise, that would error out and say there's no value to add and it would freak. Okay, okay. Okay, right. Yeah, okay. I see what they're doing. All right. Yeah, and so we just need to do that twice. Well, I'm just going to make this slot. I'm going to make my life slightly easier. We'll just do that. Make it a macro. Make it fancy. We'll do it a little different. We'll do it a little different mostly because we can you know um because that's part of the fun that's part of the challenge it's sort of like 
you know, I mean, I mean, if we if we were just doing like proper actual software engineering and like we weren't worried about like getting sued out the wazoo, you know, or something like that. Like, like if we weren't working at, you know, um, uh, um, Compaq, you know, in like the late eighties and we're trying to not get sued by IBM. It's like, yeah, you just take that just straight. That code's good. Let's just use that. But uh, no, 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 we, we're going to do this for the challenge because it's still a video game and we're going to try and do it. And that's part of learning as well, you know. It's better to, like, do it yourself. You always have, well, have a go at yourself and you'll learn the thing. Okay. So once it does that, then it's going to fall through into... We need to make a new loop. Uh, actually, and what we're also going to do is... Because I really liked the way I did this, is have a note with that line in it. And that delineates, like, that's, an, that's a separate exa to this one. Um... Which, especially when we when our code was getting enormous, was like really really helpful to do that. Okay, uh, and we're gonna come back to this one in a minute, but I want to get this one set up. Okay, so it had a loop, um, and it's a loop that actually handled zeros, which was great. Um, and I think like I mean normally I do the whole like you know copy m to t if false like do the thing, but we want to make sure that if we do get a zero, that it gets counted in, in a valid way. So this is where we are going to need a go back to the old kill code gimmick that I used to do a, like a while ago. I say a while ago, how many hours have I got on this thing? 88 hours. Like, I mean, it was not that long ago, but like a fair chunk of time ago we did that. Yeah. Okay. By the way, also, let me know how you feel about... I'm thinking after this game about playing, like, a Final Fantasy game. Because I've never... Fi actually, no. You know what? This is a question I genuinely want to ask. And I should actually post this to Twitter as well. I completely keep... I keep forgetting to ask this question. But I actually shoot want to ask this question. So, I played Final Fantasy XIV. And I, and I liked it. I, re I like it. I really, really like it. I really enjoy it a lot. Um, but... The game, of course, is broken up into a bunch of expansions. And, like, the first, the base game is called A Realm Reborn. And then you've got, uh, Stor Shad Storm, Storm, I can't remember what the heck it's called. Stormmaker or something. And then you got, like, other stuff. And then you got Shadowbringers and things. But that first one, that first base game, is that a game in and unto itself? Or is that just, like, episode one in uh, uh or, or is that just part one of like a whole set of parts because i finished the realm the realm reborn content um and before i kind of like like let it go just because i got busy like with university and stuff this is when I, I played i played a buttload of it over the holidays when i was when i was at uni um and i finished the realm reborn content and like like and i saw credits roll does that count as completing a final fantasy game because if it does then i've technically completed one final fantasy game in my entire life otherwise I've never finished a Final Fantasy game. I've started a great number of them, but I've never finished one as yet. So I'm thinking like I would like to stream it because that would then encourage me to work my way through it and like actually do the thing. <laughs> um, just like, like with Exapunks, like I'm not like, you know, this first moment I get frustrated, I just give up. It's like no, I got to keep streaming it because, like, you know, that's what that's what I'm doing. That's it, you know, I, I, I turn it into something to do, uh, in, like, you know, in that way. It, it, it builds accountability. It makes me accountable. It's like, come on, you got to actually do the thing. And I would, I would like to finish a Final Fantasy game. Which one? I've no idea. Haven't the foggiest. Probably, I'm thinking Final Fantasy 12, just because, like, that's the one I have like good fond memories of, and I'm and like. I enjoyed the characters and the plot and stuff. The, the bit that I got through, anyway, I didn't get through. I didn't get very far. I think I got like just past Garuda, and that was it. Um, if that means anything to anybody, I don't know if it does. Uh, it was a desert. There was a big turtle, and then we fought a giant bird. Um, I had to teach everybody death because that was the only way to get through that fight. <laughs> it was a lot of grinding involved. Yeah. Anyway, let, let me know what you think. I'm curious. I want to hear your thoughts. Did I have I finished a Final Fantasy game? Does finishing a Realm Reborn count, or is that like no? You just finished like you know one quarter of the game. Even though credits rolled, even though I watched credits, I don't know. 
we'll, you know, I'm curious, let me know. <sighs> okay. What is the name of this loop? What am I going to call it? I'm going to call it the, uh, the pay, wait, hold on. Because I need this to happen. Can this loop run the same for both payable and payroll? I think it does. Because all we need to do is just get some monies. But I don't know. Because it's going to get two negative values and then it's going to get two positive values. But it isn't because it's just going to have two values. Is that what it's doing? Hang on. How are they doing it? How are they doing it? Yeah, that's what I thought. The end of X. So you get the value, test if it's that, if it isn't. Okay. Wait, oh, hold the phone. That's interesting. <laughs> They're making two twice. So what's, wait, hold on. But that's doing literally the same thing. Hold on, mark two. Copy end oh, I see, and then it's gonna go in there. Oh, I see, and it's gonna grab the next ID and then run through all of this, grab that, okay. Then look for, and then send over, right. Okay. Oh, I see. So you got L and LB is how they're... Okay. And then is this going to false jump into here? Okay, if true, jump to LB3. Oh, okay. Go right here. Grab this. Got 802. Grab 230. Okay. False jump to L5. Alright. Big 2. Grab 231. Right, and then move through all of this. Oh, I see. Okay. Right. Oh, I see. And then it falls through, and then it just does it all again. Right. Okay. So that's how they that's how they're handling running through two sets of data. Okay. Right. So they do have the loop run twice. So we can't have it all in one loop, which is like I'm not gonna lie. It's kind of anathema to me. I, I don't like it. I don't like it. But you know, that's what we gotta do. Okay, so we call this one, um, so we, I suppose we got a gas loop, Gast, <laughs> gat, <laughs> g-h-a-s-t, uh, please spell John. Okay, so we call this one Gast, uh, well, Gast pay, Gast pay, Gast pay, and then we're going to have more or less the same thing with a Moss pay, which will do kind of the same thing. I don't like the L, the LB, like, you know, I like words just to make it more human readable sort of a thing. <sighs> okay, so we're going to go through that and then there needs to be a step, like, in between. Does there? Does there need to be a mark there? I suppose, yeah, there does. There does. Uh, mark uh, next pay. And that'll replicate um, an exer again. Cool. Okay. So this one was handling the making of that first one, which kind of makes sense. Um, but let's just write out this loop and get this working. So the first thing it's going to do uh, is it's going to copy M to X. Test if X is equal to negative 999. And if true, jump into next pay. Otherwise, it's going to fall through and it will... Um... So it's already received one value at this point. If it receives one value, we know it's due to receive more values. I guess, how many extra values is it gonna get? Hang on. Ugh, I hate that I have to constantly refer, but like, yeah. 
yeah, otherwise add the value of x to f, add the value of m to f. Okay, so it takes the next, takes a, all right, oh, okay, so we take a dollar value, we then, right, okay, okay, take what's already in our file from the last time, then we grab the cents value, which is going to come through right after, okay, yeah, because it's going to send two, it's going to send a dollar and then a cent, right, then we go back, why five? I don't know, okay, fine, uh, and then we just write those, write those in, and start again. Okay. Okay. That. Wait. Why don't I? Alt tab. Oi. Okay. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. Okay. That makes sense. So then, if it does this, then we need to. Uh... Well. Okay. Right out the gate, we need to go back to the start of the file. I don't know why it's seek five. Just go back. Clamp it. It's all clamped. So who cares? Let's go to the start of the file. Do that, and then we're going to add value of f to x, write that into x, and then we are going to add the value, okay, no, then we are going to, oh, actually, yeah, no, yes, yes, we're going to add the value of f to, wait, add the value of m to f, and write that into t, so that way we've got our dollar value, that's dollars, and that is cents. And uh, once it's done both of those, we are then going to go back to the start of the file, copy x to f, copy t to f, ooh, ooh, t to f, uh, and then just jump, I guess. Copy m to x. So we shouldn't need to clear out, no, because we're gonna, yeah, that's that'll clear out our T register. The X register is gonna get cleared by a new value being sent in. Okay, all right, cool. So then that should just be able to jump into Ghost Pie. Okay, and then that kind of happens again down here, but in a slightly different way. Somehow, I'm not sure. Uh, we'll have to figure that out in a minute. Um, well, does it? No, it doesn't. I think it does. It actually works exactly the same way. And I think that's very intentional. Yeah, because then next pay is going to create the thing that does the thing. Yeah. We'll create the thing that actually sends the values. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is going to do this. This is going to do that. And then it's going to go local. And then it's going to uh, copy F to X. Because we then need to send that out. Uh, why is this one creating that? Why are we creating it up here then? Because this one needs to talk to somebody, and it needs to talk to somebody in local. Uh, it needs to talk to this keyword exa to get an i to get a key keyword to look for an ID. So why not just have it be made under here? I'm fine with it making the next one. That's just that's fine. Um. But we could just save ourselves a whole lot of heartache because it can, it, can, it can inherit that value. Is that the best way to go? If it just inherits the value, because then we don't have to, because then we, then we don't have to send Gast twice. We can just send it once because we know the next time the person comes around. They're going to need it again to go into payroll to get the next ID. So then we could set it up for a copy, like copy F to M there. Um, <clears throat> no, not copy F to M. Blech, sorry, no, copy X to M because we, we saved it. And then, uh, yeah, 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 because because then it can just it can just inherit it and it just saves us a communication step, I guess. Although. 
it does make things less loopy. Ah, uh, yeah, okay, it makes it less able to loop. I think that makes sense. Yeah, okay, okay. So we copy F to X, copy X to M. And we're gonna do that twice, because we need it to run through that, and then we're gonna copy uh, F to X again. So do animate. So this is gonna be the word gas. This is going to be the word moss. Uh, and then it's going to do this bit like twice, X to M, copy X to M, oop, zoppy, copy. And then uh, once it's done both of those things, it can then copy F to X and that will be the corp name. And then it can do some corp stuff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by that point, that'll be so okay so by the time we we can start running around getting like the date and this file and stuff nobody's going to be messing about with this file because by the time uh anybody's coming back for the second time they'll be in payroll yeah because they'll have gone through the first one that's there that's that one and then they're in here having a gimmick then they come out grab the next name jump in here and start having a gimmick so nobody's using this file so we can do that Okay, dokie. Right, so then we can then do a link. Uh, what do we call it? Link 801. And then we're gonna grab, grab, uh, what are we grabbing? 220, 220. And we're going to seek all the way to the end of the file. And uh, what do we what do we need? We need to go back two from there. <laughs> Is it two? Yeah, because it'll be one two. Yeah. Okay. Then I love this. Uh, this bit was great. Instead of copying the value of f, we're going to add the value of f to one and write that into t. Yes, I love it. 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 That is like honestly fantastic. Oh, that's so efficient, and I love it. And there's a moth in here or something. Oi, get out of here. All right, uh, then we're gonna go back to the end of our file. And then we're gonna copy T, sorry, yeah, copy T to F, yes. And then copy X to F, which is the corp name. And then we're gonna drop that file. And then we wanna keep, keep on trucking in here. So we're gonna grab 221 and we're gonna go all the way to the end of this file and we're gonna copy T to F because we want that, right? And then we need to go and get the date. So then, but we can just, we can just, we can just link back and just grab it. Link minus one, link 804. I love this, copy uh, date. Yeah, so copy date to F. <laughs> Just write it straight in there. Why not? Link minus one. This is great. Oh my God. And then link, we're, we got to put it back in payable, don't we? Link uh, 801. And then we need to like start grabbing our pay values, which we haven't got yet. So I'll probably keep writing that out once I figure out the best way to do that. Um, okay. But we still haven't even made the thing that does the thing. Oh my God. I keep keep forget well it's not that I keep forgetting I keep like men for some reason my brain just keeps mentally like trying to skirt around it it's like I don't want to I don't want to do that so I'm just gonna move around okay <sighs> gotta do the thing okay so what do we call it um so that's that where do we put it as well actually um, let's put it in the order they created. So we got keyword made first, so keyword's right there. Then we're going to do this and we can keep writing on top of it. I don't care. That's fine. And then mark, uh, this will be our numbers person. So, um, what do we call them? Mason. Why not? <laughs> the numbers. Yeah. No, I want to give it a name that actually makes sense, you know? Um, what do we call them? I suppose the accountant. No, we'll, no, we'll just call them, we'll call them pay grab. 
Yeah, because that's what they do. They get pay. They get the pays. Okay. So, yeah, we'll do it here. Why not? Well, they need to talk in local as well. So, like, the literal first thing they have to do... Well, yeah, well, they'll have to do it anyway. Mode. They'll have to do it, like, anyway, because in here... Um... They'll have to do it again anyway, because be, this one will be in global, so we may as well, yeah. Um, may as well make it part of its loop in here uh, to just mode, because then it can go local. That's fine. Uh, then it's going to copy M to X, and that will be uh, a, a name, which it's then going to um, look for things. Hang on a minute, but how does, how does this work? Because you've got pay grab up here, and then that one's going to go... Oh, right, of course. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Because it's got to go in here first and then go in... That's right, because we're doing it one at a time. Never mind. Never mind. I, I got... I confused myself, but then I snapped out of my confusion. Like the good little Pokemon that I am. Okay, let's see. By the way, speaking of Pokemon, Butterfree is the best, and I will throw hands over that. Butterfree is life. All right. Uh, let's see... We do that, we do that, we get the name, and then we link, lonk, link 801, because we want to go into, 801, come on, John, can you type today, please? That'd be great. Okay, and then we need to find the ID. So we need to go grab 220, and then mark, and we'll call this one, uh, we'll go, uh, yeah, well, it's an ID loop, basically. Uh, ID search. But it will need to do this. So uh, let's call it then uh, pay or able ID. There we go. Yeah. So in payable, this is how it searches for ID. And then we'll have one called roll ID, which is the searchable for that, which is fine. Okay. So we do this. And. <clears throat> right. It only needs to run through this once, doesn't it? Hang on. Uh, where is it getting its IDs from? Here. Oh yeah, because we copied over twice each time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, this makes sense. Okay, so it's going to then uh, grab 220. Yep, grabs it. And now it's just going to start doing some testing. So test if uh, X is equal to F. Or should we do? No, I'll do it the other way. F is equal to X because that makes more sense to me. I don't think it actually matters, but uh, personal preference. Uh, and if false, jump into able ID. Right, okay, and then it'll just go run through that until it finds a match. So let's say for Ghast. Okay, so it's gonna go to here and then it's gonna go to here. So it needs to then seek back to copy F to X and that will be an ID, ID number. And then we're going to uh, drop the file because at that point we don't need it anymore we then need to grab uh, 221 and uh, then start looking for stuff so it does that but then it needs to go global doesn't it to start sending data yeah so we do that and then we've got to go global because uh, the person handing out the IDs is not... Well, the eggs are handing out the IDs is not the eggs that's going to be taken in the numbers. Yeah, that is all being handled up here through ghast pay. Okay. So then we go global. Great. And then we create a new loop and we call this, uh, I suppose, able monies. Uh, able... Mark... No, I'll just call it payable. Yeah, we'll call it payable. Because this is like, this is now we're actually in the thing doing the payables. Yeah, we'll just call it that. That's cool. Um, <clears throat> now, this is where things get a little bit squirrely because they were doing some funky business with negative values. Um, but it all seemed to work out, but I don't know how. I don't know how they did it. But they did it. They did the thing. 
I'll have to go back and take a look in a minute. But I think the first thing I'm going to do, <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do is set up the loop just to find the number. So uh, test if um, f is equal to x, it literally does the same thing, I guess. f jump to payable. Otherwise, when you find the number, <clears throat> so let's say you found the number here, you're gonna be here. So we need to uh, seek forward one. And then, uh, what did it do? It multiplied, multi, is it, no, it's mul i like that. Yeah, multiply the value of f by negative one and write that to m. And then, does it, it does that twice, yeah. Multiply the value of f by negative one, write that into m. Can I make that, is that what it's doing? I'm just going to double check real fast. Is that what that's doing? Um, there is the loop, it's up here, isn't it? Yeah, no, that's it, writing stuff in. Who's actually, it's two. Uh, let's see, two, so two is going through here, grabbing that file, looking for the ID, finds the ID, then it goes into here. Yeah, okay, so that's how they're doing it. They're doing a multiply. Okay, well, all right. I th and they're doing it straight twice. So I think we can make that a macro just to keep the code easy to modify in the future. Uh, well, hold on, I don't want to delete all of it, actually. I just want to delete that last line. I'm going to make that an end here at rep twice you're gonna do that step twice great uh and then oh right we need to do a test eof and so that probably needs to happen right at the beginning too uh, okay test eof and if true it needs to jump somewhere i don't know where it's going to jump to uh, oh jump to uh mark uh next uh next page um yeah <clears throat> well it's not pay grab it's pay grab oh, next pay we'll call it next pay yeah that works oh no it doesn't what am i calling am i calling something else next pay i am calling that one next i thought i was okay so we'll call it then uh next host yeah. Okay, and, and so this time it's going to link back again. And uh, what do you? Who's who's sending me? Oh, okay. Dave sent me a snap. Oh, that's unusual. Not the slightest. Next host. When you get to the end of the file, because yeah, when I'm there at the end of the file, there's nothing else there. Cool. You're gonna go back. I'm gonna copy M to X, and that should be the next ID. That'll be another ID. Well, it'll be another name. And then, oh, but before you do that, because you are global, you need to go local to get that. Otherwise, you're gonna get nothing, and you're gonna freeze up, and it's just gonna be a bad time. Then needs to uh, link 802 and grab file 230 grab file no wait it's 230 yeah 230 230 and then we need to do another search so mark and this one is roll id and then we're going to have a, another mark for uh payroll and then we can kind of copy this over so we just do we go do this do this because it's literally the same thing. And then it does that, and then it does the payroll. Uh, well, hold on a minute, no, because if it's false, it's going to jump into roll ID. This has gotten me in trouble before. And then everything else is, yeah, literally the same, cool. So then payroll works in more or less the same way. But instead of doing a multiplier, we're gonna change the maths on this one, because this one should just be um, uh, I think, it, is it is it just a straight copy or are they actually doing maths? 
It happens twice. I definitely know it happens twice, but I don't know what it actually does, but we'll figure that out in a sec. Okay, and then we will mark a uh, uh, pay done. Or done pay. And that will uh, copy that, or that, oh, no, that, over to M. Um, doesn't need to go, it'll still be in global at the end of this, so that's fine. Cool, so at the end of the file, it's gonna go to done pay. Sweet, do that. And then otherwise it's gonna do all this, and a false jump into payroll. Cool. and we still need to figure out the math. I'm pretty sure it was just a copy was the way the algorithm works. For the second one, so there's that one, and then it goes through, and then it does this. Wait, hold on. Goes through to LB3. Yeah, does all of this, grabs 230. All right, that's it, grabbing the next ID. Okay, and then, yeah, so it is, it's just a straight copy. Okay, okay. Right. So this is going to be copy F to M. Done. Honestly, just doing it that way is also like so much better than having like a, a dollar loop and a cents loop. Like, I like that a lot more. It's like while you're here, you may as well just grab both. Yeah. Okay. So then it does that. And then that is going to loop through again. Up here. Just to do all of this business. And then we need to... Oh, I need to change this. Okay, so if true... Yeah, that needs to be fixed. Um, and that will need to be fixed. But as far as I know... As far as, I'm, as far as I'm aware, the code is also exactly the same otherwise. So we need to put in a, what do you do when you're done? Um, well, by the time it's done, th there should be somebody in here waiting for something. Well, keyword will be waiting for something, won't it? Yeah, so you'll link 801. You're gonna go into here, you're gonna grab, uh, 21 because you've already wait hold on go to the end copy t to f make minus one you've done that all oh, right we're still holding we're still holding it okay and then so we're going to copy so we need to mode because we're still local at this point so we're going to go global and then we're going to copy uh <clears throat> copy m to f and that'll get done twice. Copy. Oh, whoops, what am I doing? Uh, blah, 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 at rep two. And we'll do that twice. Okay. And then it can then freak out. It can do this. Oh, no, it won't because that'll, that'll be bad. Uh, then we need it to hold. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, we can't have an error out because there's nothing for it to error out on. Because it'll just, it'll, well, it'll try and do a copy M to X and that's bad. We don't want it to do that. So, uh, it'll just freeze. So that needs to be done like that. Just handle that way. Uh, but before it does that, we need to get some maths being done, I think. So once we've got all the numbers, we need to do maths on it, I believe. Mark maths. This is where we need to do some maths. I think, um, because, we, well, we will know because we should have, values that have all been added together. Hang on. So what's this one doing? So it does that. Yep, jumps to, okay, so we'll jump to here. So once it grabs both sets of numbers, Copies the numbers over. Oh, right, of course, we need to get our sense doing the really sick Swiss stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, 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 cool. I knew there was some extra maths we needed to do. I knew there was. Okay. So, we need to. Doing this. So, we're already at the start of the file. Great. 
copy f to x, copy f to t, and then we need to swizz out the numbers. So we're going to swizz, uh, swizz from t three and write that into f. I believe is what they were doing. And then we need to uh, swizz from t uh, the last two numbers and write that into t. Do we need to write them into t? It's mm, yes, we do. I think we do. No, I think we no. I think we need to write them into f because I think they do. There wasn't there a test that needed to be done at this point? Yeah, yeah. Then they go back. Oh, I see. Oh, I see. Because then you've got dollars and cents values. Oh, okay. Wait, copy f to t wait. Hold on. Add the value of f to x. Yeah, that makes sense. So hold on. What are you doing? What are you doing? All oh, right, because you've got dollars in there. So you're adding. Yeah. So then you, you've if if there is anything there, if there's anything there, otherwise it's zero. So you're adding zero, which is fine. And then you copy this new cents value over. What? Why not just keep it here? Why why write it into F? Because we could just make that a seek minus one and the whole thing works. Go back, test if T. Oh, okay, but we still need right, okay, that's why if it's a zero? We do a test, okay. Otherwise, add 100 to the value of f and write that into t if it's less than zero. Okay. Okay, so that's obviously accounting for some kind of an overflow that I'm not fully understanding. But I do know that I think test two has an underflow in it. So we'll, we can test it against test two and find out. Okay, so basically, all right, so we want to do this. Fine, um, okay, fine. Uh, and then we want to go back to and we want to then add the value of f to x and write that into x and that gives us our new with our dollars added which is really quite nice and then we want to copy f to t test if uh, t is less than zero and if true it's going to jump somewhere i don't know where otherwise um But only if it's less than zero. Wait, is it less than zero or was it a false? Was it a, was it an F jump or a T jump? Or a T jump? Where were you jumping? Where were you jumping, son? If false. Ah, okay. If false. Jump. Okay. To here. And do stuff. Otherwise, you need to do stuff here. Um. I mean, okay. So, okay, so if it is underflowed, it's going to do this. Otherwise, it's just going to skip over it. Why not just have it, if it's true, do this? Oh, I see, because you need it to do this regardless. I see, I see. This needs to happen every time. If, if true or false, this still needs to happen. But between here and here, you want to do some extra stuff. Okay. Uh, yeah, okay. So, uh, all right. So then we'll call that, like, basically a continue is kind of how that's working, yeah. Uh, so if Drew, jump to continue maths. And it's gonna freak out. <clears throat> Mark, continue maths. Thankfully my spelling is consistent today, which is quite nice. Okay, no, but that's a false. Uh, let's see, it's a false. Yeah, so false jump to here and you're gonna do stuff, okay. Uh, I don't know what I'm supposed to do here if it's underflowed, but it's okay. But continue maths. Uh, they're copying. Well, okay, hang on a minute because copy F to T. Do this. Um, okay, hang on. So what is it? 
how's it accounting for uh, Oh, I see, it does the seek there. Ah, oh, I see, I see. Yeah, that's what I was... Right, okay, right, okay. That's not how... Yeah, right. But it kind of doesn't matter, so we might as well just, like, do it here, because it's sort of like, no matter what happens here, we want to go back, so that's fine. Copy F2T, and that happens no matter what here. Otherwise, we need to uh, add the value, add to... Uh, add the value of 100 to F. Um, well, I'm going to call this add to the F uh, 100. Write that into T. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then seek back one. Copy T to F. And that's all that needs to do, I think. Does it need to do anything else? It might need to do some other stuff. I can't remember. What are we doing? Um, so we're doing that. Oh, oh, I see, I see, I see, I see. Okay, 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 yeah. We need to account for right. And then... Oh, I see, I see. F to T. Wait, hold on. Hold the phone. If it's less than zero, add 100 to F and write that into T. Okay, subtract one from X. So right now, yeah, okay, so we grab the cents and then we moved over to an empty spot and then we copied over the new cent value, went back, grabbed the cent value Oh, right, and the dollar values, yeah, the dollar value, we don't care about the dollar value. Okay, we were just preserving it for, oh no, yeah, for our additional addition, but that was it. Okay, that, okay, all right, all right, so this is, it's on, yeah, okay, it's just because setting, re, re, figuring out cents is a pain in the behind. Okay, so then we need to subtract from X1, right, then into X, yep, because if we did a dollar here, we need to like, yeah, sort that out, cool. So that accounts for that, if it happens. Otherwise, we copy T to F, and then, right, and then seek back one again. Yeah, so that way this all happens the same. Okay, uh, and then it needs to, so now we've got dollars and cents in our, in our we've got dollars in our X register, and we've got cents in our T register, and, then all that's really left to do is to send it. So wipe the file we're holding. Let's, well, actually, I'd rather do this way. I'd rather copy, uh, it's still global, yeah. So copy M to, oh, sorry, bleh, copy X to M, and then copy T to M, then wipe the file, and then it can just halt out on there being nothing there, yeah. Wait a minute. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, isn't this holding a file? It is. So I think it needs to wipe the file it's holding. Um, no, it's already done that, didn't it? Wait, hold on. Hold on. This one, because we gotta we gotta make sure our garbage collection is still good. So we're gonna go to here. Where does the next drop? It's right here. So okay, so you grab. You grab, okay, wait a minute. You grab the port name. But I never dropped the file. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's gonna cause me some strife. So once I got the court name though, wipe that file. No sense in dropping it, we'll just wipe it. And then we go in here, grab this, do this, and then we do need to drop that file. Yep, grab that one and do all of our business. Yes. Yeah, so that one's already cleaned up at that point. Sweet! Alright, I'm very happy with that. Um, I think that... Well, instead of calling it continue maths, we'll call it send maths. Because at this point it's just going to send. Yeah. So, send maths. Or send, 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 uh, send pay, I guess I should call it. 
because that's what we're doing. Now we're finally sending over the actual send pay, the back pay. Um, that's gonna send it right here. Yeah, okay. Yep, okay. Uh, I think I did this right. Is that correct, that last bit? I think that last bit's fine. Uh, the X to F, wait, what? F to T, wipe that file. Oh, it does it itself. Ah, okay, okay. Where I've set it up so that like, there's somebody in here ready to go. Oh, okay, all right. Well, I'm gonna try it my way because I can. Wait, hold on, what, what, are, they, what are they at? 136, okay, what am I at? Because I'm not doing that. I'm at 129. See, I'm not just straight copying and pasting. I didn't even realize I'd done it differently. That being said though, this might break. <laughs> the other one works. But it's fine, it's fine. Um, if we have to, then we can, yeah, we can, we can, we can sort that, but um, it should be okay. Uh, Cause this one at this point, When it goes global is... Oh, wait a minute. Is this one sending over stuff in global at that time? Oh, it might be. It might be. What is... Okay, where is uh, payroll? Payroll? Yes, it is. Ah, that's bad. That's bad. Okay, so actually what we need to do is... Yeah, not do that. We just need to do that. Yeah, and just drop the file off back in here. That's fine. Uh, okay, so then this one needs to do stuff. Well, actually, but it's here, at this point, we've got everything we need. So we do that, wipe the file we're holding, and then, um, hold on, we don't need that wipe step. Uh, and then we're going to uh, link 801, grab uh, file 221, go all the way to the end of the file, and then we just have to copy, no, not to M, to F. And that'll be our final dollars and cents values. Yep. And uh, then that's it. That's it, done. Then, it, then, it, then it'll freak out and error out, I think. Yeah. I think, yeah, that'll work. Unless... Yeah, okay. Grab that. Yeah, okay. Because we're not... Once we've... Once we've when, when did we actually copy X into our F register? We never did. So... Oh, we did. Hang on. Well, uh, we were doing it here. Yeah. So we jumped to next pay. Sweet. Yeah. No, we did it here. Yeah. And then... But then we never really mess with it again unless we're handling sense. So, yeah, okay. That should actually work out quite nice. I hope. Let's send it. Let's see what happens. Because it... Did it break? Oh, God. Did it break? It broke. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It broke. Where did I... It... So, this one blew up too early is what it looked like. Hang on, so you grab that, you're grabbing that file. Okay, what do you got? You've got the word ghast. Okay, and you're a happy little lamb looking for ghast. Okay, so you're gonna go through, and you're gonna get that, and you're gonna find it, and then you're gonna go back, and you're gonna grab that word, cool. You drop that, go here, go to global, great. Test the end of the file, which you're not at, so then you're gonna test that, and if it's not true, you're gonna jump back, and you're gonna move all the way through, and you're gonna look for the value 2006. Okay, so you're gonna go all the way through, looking for 2006. So move through, 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 through. Okay, here, it's true. So you go forward one, F by one. So that should be negative, yes. 
Then you do the same thing again, while this one, yep, does that. Okay, and then you go local. Oh, didn't jump back. That's the problem. Did not jump back. I didn't make that actual loop loopy. So it needs to do all of this. Yeah, and then jump back into payable. And I'm gonna have the same problem right here in payroll. I'm gonna have the exact same problem. Jump into payroll. Okay, well that's not too bad. I mean, that's where it broke. I'm, I'm okay with that. Um, okay, so now it's looking. It's doing its business. Okay. Hmm. Oh, we didn't drop the file. Yep, that'll be another problem we didn't do. Mm -hmm. Just trying to grab this and erroring out. Yeah. So once we get to here, yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to drop the file. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's important. That's an important step. Yep. Just a couple little tweaks. Just a couple little tweaks. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. These aren't big like map. Oh, what the heck? Why is that breaking again? Okay. Well, that's, that's weird. Um, let's get all the way over to here. You do that, you drop that file, you come out here, you grab the name Gast again, okay. You go in here, you grab the two, you grab 230, great. And then you move through, looking for Gast, and Gast is right at the end, and you go, I found it. Yeah, and then you go back, and you grab the ID number, you drop, oh, I, yep. Yeah. Because I copied and pasted my code. This always happens whenever I copy and paste my code. I don't look. It's 231, not 221. Okay, well, let's let's do this again. All right, then you do that. Then you go global, and then you're doing all of this business. Okay, and now you're a happy little lamb to send over stuff. Cool. And then you're going to do... And then that whole thing should just run again. Mm-hmm. Okay. Cool. Yep, and that, that went off and took care of that, which is nice. Oh, but then you created another exit because I'll betcha I've done gone and copied and pasted my code again and that's bad. Okay, Moss Pay, yeah, is jumping into Gast Pay. Um, which shouldn't when, uh, okay. So if true, yeah. So this, first of all, this needs to be jumping into Moss Pay. Yep. And then this should be jumping into Mass. I bet you I didn't write this because I hadn't written this. So that's my problem. Okay. Um, yeah. All right. That should now actually like uh, work without causing a freak out. Yeah. Okay. So now you're just going to. Okay. We got through test one. Okay, can we get through test two? Okay. Okay, now we're in payroll. Okay. Okay, we got through test two. Can we get through test three? Come on, baby. Come on, this was the one that was causing me the most trouble. Okay, grab moss, dealt with that. Good, good. Oh, look at that. It got through test three. Oh yeah. Okay, let's fast forward. <gasps> yes, we can get through all of the things. Come on, get me, tell me that 100. Yes. <laughs> ah. mm. Come on. All right, okay, where are we at? So, thank you for the kindness of strangers on the internet. Oh, my God. Oh. That was actually, like, no joke. That was harder than the last level of the game. That was, like, actually hard. And, like, the last level of the game was a real, like, that was a real doozy. That was a, real, that was a proper doozy. That one, this makes me worried about the next level. <laughs> level like a lot like i'm actually like extremely worried about the next level because that was a oh boy that was a that was a mini nightmare 
Okay. So, but we put up a score, but I, and, and here's the thing, right? Before anybody goes, oh, we well, didn't really put up a score. You just copied and pasted. I didn't. They were at 136. We're at 132. We optimized their code. And our activity is lower. Theirs was 15, ours is 14. I don't know what their cycles are, though. Actually, you know what? Let's um, let's go back and run theirs and see what their cycles are at. So let's do this. We'll open this up, run it through, and see what they get to in cycles. This way, we got a direct comparison. Okay. So they were at 1421. So let's see now. 1421. Okay, so we had the same number of cycles, but I did it in less... I did it in a less small size with, wow, way less activity, with two less activity. Sweet. How about that? So their activity is here. Mine's smack on the money. Our sizes are literally the same and our cycles are literally the same. Cool. Okay, well, here's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna get rid of all of the other like solutions. We're gonna get rid of the underflow experiment. We'll get rid of all of the garbage, clean up all that. And this can be now be promoted to new solution one. Okay, and that's the found online. Um, thank you to that person, like I said, who had that. Where did I grab it from? I think I found it on the Steam forums, or was it on Reddit? I looked through a lot because there were there was there was some on Reddit, there was some on Steam. I remember somebody had posted some to GitHub. but I don't remember which one I grabbed. I think it was the Steam forum. Yeah, thank you so much, uh, person on a Steam forum, because that was holy dooly. Oh my God. Okay, see, oh, we got that tick. All right, now we've got one level left. Like, this is it. We do this level and then we're done. I'm, I'm like, I'm kind of like now, honestly, like I wasn't done with Exapunks. I was like really, really happy with like continuously playing it. Oh, but that one kind of drained me. That one particular level. Like, that was like, oh, that was a real brain buster. Um, so now I kind of want to, like, get through the bonus campaign and just be done with it. Maybe, yeah. I, like, I mean, I, I was going to make my own level, but, like... Oh, I, I'm pretty sure, if I remembered correctly, a lot you do that a lot in JavaScript. And, like, I don't want to learn JavaScript. It's not that I... Well, it's not that I don't want to learn JavaScript. I learned a little bit of JavaScript, but, like... I mean, I'm currently focused on teaching myself C Sharp and I'm like really happy with like doing that. I want to keep doing that. I don't want to like start a whole, start another programming language in the middle. Like I'm pretty happy with just like keep on keeping on with C Sharp. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, um, which is not linked below, but like, you know, if, if you, I don't, I don't link my Twitter, my personal Twitter just because it's pretty boring. Although if you're watching this, then you actually might find it interesting. I, I say boring to like, you know, a lot of other people in my life who I've talked to about programming and they're like, I don't care. So I suppose that's my point of comparison. But I post like, you know, some C sharp code that I write and I go, hey, look at this. It's really cool. I'm really happy with this. I don't even really care. I, I, I mean, I, I'm more, again, I just do it for accountability reasons. It's sort of like, you know, I'm learning C sharp and it's like a good way of like keeping track of my own progress. I don't really care if anybody else sees it. But I want to keep going with that. But before I do, I want to take, like, honest to God, a really quick break. I have to kind of go to the bathroom, like, really, really fast. And then I will come back. It, honestly, I'll be, I'll be gone for a couple of minutes. Um, and then I will come back and we will tackle the U.S. Department of Defense. Alrighty. I will be back in just a moment. G'day, g'day, everybody. We're back. Thank you so much for, you know, bearing with me while I took a quick break. Uh, so the Steam Summer Sale just started, apparently. And I know that because I got an email saying, Hey, uh, 25 items on your wish list are on sale. I'm like, oh, cool, great. And I real quickly, really quick, I double checked and it is. Exapunks is one of the games that's on special. It's like half price. I would actually recommend this game. Like, I actually would. And I, and I encourage people to like buy it. And this is not a sponsorship thing. It's just like, I've had a lot of fun with this. It's like honestly helped me a lot. And I know that sounds weird given that I just sat here and like pulled my hair out. Like, I, I mean, I have less hair on my head now as a result, but like, I feel like I'm a better person for it. Cause like doing this and playing it, you know, for a couple of hours a day, you know, four days a week, it's given me, you know, a, a really good, it, it's kind of tuned my brain, I think is the best way to put it tuning my brain yeah tuning my brain into um 
uh, uh, software engineering and like programming and like, you know, how all of that works. And it's given me some like ways of like understanding it. Like I've been teaching myself C sharp and I'm not even kidding when I'm writing out the code, I imagine that I'm writing it in, you know, in this interface, like, you know, I imagine I'm writing it out kind of like this. And I, as I see the code step through in my head, I see it kind of like this. Although I'm also like always surprised at how much, fa <laughs> how much faster, um, the, the program actually runs like I wrote uh, I wrote a, uh, an initiative order tracker or an, an, an initiative order I should say sorter not tra ah, tracker I don't care for uh, Dungeons and Dragons and basically the way it works is that um, you know you take a that it, it, it set, you say how many members of the party there are then you get the character's name and their initiative role and then it sorts the initiative role from highest to lowest and that's you know that's the turn order then, um, like I wrote that out and honestly, as I was writing it, I was like seeing it in my head as like a series of, cause basically the thing works in a series of loops and, uh, and I was seeing those in my head visualized as like the Exapunks interface. So it's given me kind of a good visual way of like understanding code, which is good for me because that's how I understand code. Like that's how... Well, not understand because that's how I understand the world around me. I'm a visual person. You know, I was a video editor before I was a uh, before I was anything else, actually. So yeah, it's great. Anyway, anyway, that's the, enough of me. Like you know, waxing poetic about about this game. You should buy it. It's worth the money. I'll say that. Um, don't, but don't play it like an MMO. Don't play it like. You know, don't 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 sit down and be like, oh, this is me for the next eight hours. Don't don't treat it like that. In fact, I would say give yourself a time limit. Like, say I will only play it for two hours a day. Not because just because otherwise you're going to burn yourself out on it. Because I mean, it's a puzzle game. Like it's it's a and the puzzles are difficult and they're supposed to be and they're great and that's what I like about it. Like, you know, it really challenges you. But if you but if you try and sit and do it for eight hours straight, you're just going to get drained. You're just going to get drained and you're going to be like, I can't think anymore and you need to like take a break like the game really is one of those games you need to take a break from in order to come back to it and like keep moving through it so i would yeah like just give yourself a timer and say like i will play for this long and then that's it and that's what i like about streaming it is like it gives me that timer like i, I know i can play for another hour and then i'm gonna stop because that's the end of the stream and i'm not saying you have to stream it although if you do by all means go for it like i don't know how many exapunk streamers there are out there but there's always room for more as far as I'm concerned. So go for it. All right, let's do the US Department of Defense. And then hang on a minute. I know we've got some achievements left to get. How many achievements have I got left? Besides, I'm not going to do the hack match ones. I know that. So I'm not going to do this, the free sell ones. I'm not going to do the hack match ones. So I've got complete every task in the bonus campaign. Okay. And then I've got rite of passage and kleptomancer. And I'm not sure if they are... Virulently hath every item, but I think Kleptomance, I think that might be a bonus campaign one, but I, th I think Rite of Passage sounds like something for um, King's Ransom Online. Because, I don't know, that, that's... A Bog Witch just seems like a... Um, like a, yeah, like a fantasy thing. Um, but, vir but like... But so, but see, kleptomancer. Well, yeah, but kleptomancer. I don't know. I feel like you know that's that's you know necromancer stuff. I feel like the clue there is it's a vampire thing. I don't know. Also, the little icons a dagger, and I know that we're looking for daggers, um, in that specific level. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Um, but I wouldn't mind going and getting those two achievements just specifically. Like I'm not gonna get like I said. I'm, I'm no. I've no interest in the hack match one no interest in the free sell one like that would like i mean one like the both one of the achievement the free sell one is like win 100 games of that and i'm just i'm not going to sit here for the next like 200 hours and be like okay so we are not just an exapunks streamer anymore we're like in a subcategory all on our own we are an exapunks like free sell streamer it's like no i'm not going to do that i'm not going to do that i have no interest um i might play one more game like you know if if, if we finish this we'll probably finish this next stream but like, depending on how much time there is at the end, I might play hack match or um, some free sell at the end there. But that's it. I'm not gonna like go for the achievement. I might go. For, well, yeah. I, if we have time, maybe we'll do the hack match achievement until I get sick of it and change my mind. 
Okay, so what are we doing? Continue the endless search for government secrets with hydroponics. Okay. Connect to network. Ooh, that's a fancy looking network. I like this. This is nice. Okay, cool. Find the unredacted version of the Project Ogre report. Okay, right. Make a copy of it and bring the copy back to your host. The target file will be behind one or more locks which each require a three digit code. Okay, okay. Since this task takes place inside a network run by the military, it includes additional security features not found in other networks. You may not have more than one exit in the network at a time, and you may not use the M register to communicate between an exit in the network and an exit in your host. Oh! Oh, okay, <laughs> okay, right, um, right on, hmm, okay, that's interesting, you may not have more than one exit in the network at a time. So we can have as many as we want in our host though, that's fine. Okay, I'm cool with that. But basically, okay, so basically, before I got to this bit, before I got to this bit, to this big old spanner. Oh, I love it, I love it though, I love it though. Okay, before I got to that big old spanner, my thought was, I was like, oh, okay, we have to like find the find a lock. Okay, well, that means we brute force it. That's just like, you know, the tech redshift puzzle. Know how to do that. And then it was like, go and find a file. Well, that's no problem. We just look for Project Ogre. No problem. Even if we have to do the lock thing a couple of times, no problem. And then I was like, okay, what are in these? Oh, I see. These are all... Um, declassified files as well. That's why they're publicly accessible to... Yeah, okay. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, so... He, okay, anyway, I'll go with my thoughts. So I was going to do the tech redshift gimmick here, and then we probably have to do it here and here just to get at the... the that's probably where the super secret files are here. I'll bet you that's where, like, the cloning technology... Uh, files like if we bothered to like crack this far in we could probably we probably do actually Now that I think about it we probably do because um, uh, The project we're looking for I'll betcha is in one of these hosts But see but see the way look at the way the networks built it looks like there's like different levels of security There's like your top secret stuff and there's then like yeah area 51 stuff right so is well okay non-earth okay so what technologically advanced something non-earth okay that sounds like some area 51 stuff which means it's probably in here but if you're doing 100 test runs right my guess is is that the the, the file you're looking for is means it's probably going to move from like area 51 stuff to here in fact does the file change no the file doesn't change either so you're always looking for project ogre Okay. I mean, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to us. We can't hard code any of these values. Um, so we'll just have to, we have to like grab this and look for this, but we're not going to do that at first. Because we can only have one in the network. Our activity score is just going to be stupid. Like it really is. Our activity score is just going to be like insane. Okay. And we can't communicate. You may not use the M register to communicate between an exit or oh, in the network and an exit in your host. Okay, uh, but we can only have one in the network anyway, so I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, okay. So let's start with our brute force lock. Well, let's do a lock pick. In fact, you know what? We might even create a couple, because what we can do is we can create an exit and its whole job is to just break locks. Once it breaks all the locks, it can come back and be like, I'm done, and then like send off another exit to like do stuff. So maybe we'll do that. Well, okay, so okay, so first thing it needs to do then is link 800, the old international. Then mark and we'll call this lock, lock pick. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to swizz uh, the value of, uh, so how, 
Oh, wait a minute. We don't have to write three values. We just, okay, hang on. Well, then actually this can be even fancy, fancy. Oh, but how do we do a test? Ah, how do we test if the lock was broken? I don't know, but here's what I'm going to do first off. I'm just going to, I'm just going to run the thing through and let it blow itself up and we'll see what's in here before we figure that out. Uh, I think I've got a solution for that though. Basically, we'll just do like run this through um, and then like, you know, it'll it'll type out a number and send out. Actually, this one will do that. This one will add up the number and then send an exit off to like enter it in and we'll just do that. Like I said, our activity score is going to be ruined. Ruined! Like, I mean, this is going to end up in like the thousands. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Okay. But we're just going to build it really simple at first. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy X to uh, lock. Then we're going to add to the value of X one. And then we're going to jump into lock pick. And we're just going to do that all the live long day. Um, actually, you know what? No, what we'll do is we will test if X is uh, greater than 999 and if it's False, we will jump into lockpick is what we will do. At false, jump into lockpick. That way we can just run all the way through and we won't end up at 9999 and have it like, you know, freak out. So that's fine. So let's just do that. Can we just, can we do that? Okay. Looks like we can. Sick. Whoa. Oh, oh. Oh. Oh, wait a minute. How the heck does this lock work? Wait. Hold on. One, two, three, four, five. So we've copied five, nothing. We've got six. Copy six. And then we get something there. Uh. Okay, so we know. Well, but ha that doesn't help us, I guess. No, it doesn't. At some point. Okay, so we get a three. Okay, so now we got to get into the hundreds, I guess. Well, okay, so then we know. Well, no, because we don't know every every test. It could be the the the, the lock combination is ninety, and if it is, then it's zero nine zero. So we need to start from zero. Okay. Once it unlocks, though, does it um, stay open, or if we enter the wrong value, does it then lock itself shut? Is the question. Well, we'll find out. We'll just let it run. Well, we have 250. Yeah, we're gonna be here. We're gonna be here a while just to like see what happens when we break the lock. So, so I mean, the combination is three and six. I mean, I suppose four. Okay, so it's four, three, six. Okay, but once you crack it, it stays open. Okay, okay. Oh, but that's interesting. There was still no link. Maybe when you enter... Okay, hang on a minute then. What we're going to do then is we're going to copy 436 to lock and then just do nothing for a step. We'll do this. Okay. All right. Okay. So it has to have the number in it or else the... So it, we can see what's in here, but we can't do anything with it. Right. Okay. But there's no... Okay. But there's another lock and that lock is for up here. Um, right, okie dokie, but is what, so that's Orbis, okay, don't care, Ember, don't care, well actually no, Ember, that's the general artificial intelligence using a baseline emulated reasoning approach of four initial seed programs, one developed knowledge acquisition, language comprehension and exhibited signs of metacognition result success. Oh, there we go. It's from 1994. There's, 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 uh, there's Ember. There's the AI. So it was a, uh, yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. And then, but that's not what we're looking for, though. It's cool. It's a good little bit of oh, project. Okay. Oh, and that's it there. Ah. Okay. Advanced craft of non-Earth origin with the purpose of scenario planning should. Okay. Uh, same special footage for the director depicting a hypothetical scenario involving a technical. Okay. Right. So it's just like, yeah. Okay. So there it is though. So we don't need to break that lock, but in another test, we might need to break that lock. So, okay. Okay. Um, okay. 
Okay. I still think the the plan of break a lock, move in, break a lock, move in is like the way to go. And we know that's an 800 link. Okay, that's cool too. Okay, so um, what we'll do then is we will we need to have a lockpick loop, but uh, okay, so this one is actually going to repl lock pick. <clears throat> and um, actually, I should put this mark. Uh, 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 what, what, what will we call it? I suppose um, crack. We we'll just call it a cracker. Uh, well, we we'll call it break. We we'll call it break lock or, or lock loop, actually, because that's what it is. There we go. That's better. Okay, so we got a lock loop, and literally all it does is do that. Um, but how do I how do I break out of this loop though? Uh, hmm. So lockpick this one. Okay, actually, what we'll do add to x one, write that into x, jump into lock loop at some in some fashion. I don't know how. Um, yeah, okay, so this one will copy the value of x to lock and then link 800. And of course, if it doesn't work, it won't do anything. But if it does, we need it to link back one uh, and um, uh, 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 tell it that it's done. Maybe we don't. Maybe we just tell it. Maybe we just shoot it. I don't know. Um, but we're not going to get to this point in a while. Well, actually, what we'll do is we'll have it, I don't know, freeze. I don't know. We'll have it. Let's just see what this does. Oh, right. It's going to link 800. We don't want it to do that at all. Um, so, yeah, we, we don't, we don't, you don't, don't do that. Uh, you're just going to do this. So, you're going to go here, and the first thing you do is link 800. That's how I want it. Do that. Okay, so you're just going to keep sending stuff through. That's great. Um, okay. Epilepsy warning. That's some, like, flashing. Okay. So we know the, an we know the answer is 436, so we're just going to, like, move it through until we get to 436. Um, technically, we haven't even set it... Well, set it to 9999, so that's a problem, but, like, whatever. Uh, okay. Um, 400... So we get to 436. Because then I want to see what happens at 436. 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, so you're going to blow up. You're going to go in. And you're going to post in the correct answer. And you're going to move to here. Now, what happens to you at this point? There's two of them. Ah, the alarm goes off. Right, and that's right. Okay, so you can have multiples in there, but then the alarm goes off and it goes, excuse me. Uh, yeah, okay, and that's bad because we don't want the alarm to go off. And that's, yeah, so we fail to leave no trace. Right, okay. Mm, okay. So then what we need to do is we need to add in... Uh, some no operation steps. We need to slow this whole thing down, I think. So what we're going to do is we're going to go... Okay, so we, we do this and add one, and that's just going to jump over and then do that. So by the time it's here, it's here. So we need to add noob in twice. Um... Let's call it three. So if we just go, we'll just do a rep. We'll do it. We'll do a repeater. We'll make it a macro, and uh, we'll do uh, move. So it'll just do nothing. It'll just sit there for a while. That's totally cool. And then it jumps back. In fact, I'm not going to make it three. I'm going to make it four because I want to give there enough time to link one, link minus one, and then it's going to kill. So we're going to shoot this thing in the head. So this is just going to run. 
Um, there's no sense in doing any testing or anything because that's just extra code we literally do not need. Um, so we're going to do that, and it's just going to. This is just going to run. It's just going to keep spitting out X's until we get the right one, and then we shoot it. Then, then we want to. Um, then we actually like want to like kind of jump back into the lockpick loop again, don't we? But we don't want to deal with this lock. We want to deal with this lock. So we need to create a second lock loop. Ah, dang it. Okay, so we're going to call this lock loop one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Because then we need to create a second one that will link 800 twice. We're going to go 800 to here, and then 800 to here, and then start fiddling with this lock. Um, and then once we unlock the entire thing... But do we want to do that? Because, like, the file we're looking for could very well be in here. And if it's in here, then we don't need to run the second lock gimmick. So maybe we do a search first? Um, well, yeah, because this has only got two in it. So, yeah, we may as well, actually. Okay, so we do that. So we kill, and we need to be in here anyway, because now we need to grab 300. And then we need to copy over... Project Ogre, so we need to copy uh, F to X, and then we're going to drop that file, and then we're going to link 800, and then link 800, so we're back in here, and then, um, uh, I suppose I just have to hard code this, there's no way, to, cause, because I've got something in my X-ray register and I need to do a test, so, yeah, okay, that sucks. All right, so then we just have to go uh, link 801. Actually, you know what? We'll create a mark called found. That's what we'll do. Um, <clears throat> but how do I uh, how do, how do I make a copy of the file though? <sighs> Can I take it out? Is it locked in there? Like, is it like this one? Can I not take it out of its host? Because if I can leave it, if I can take it out of the host, if I can just be like, I'm just going to borrow this for like, just like a real hot minute and just like, whoop, put it into my, go into my host, create a scribe, brrr, copy it over and then just put it back. That'd be great. Yeah. And we could totally figure out where we need to go because we just go host, host X. Oh, that'd be a problem though. Because if it's in here, that's the same number. Mm. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. We will cross that bridge when we come to it. Anyway, so link 801. Uh, grab, uh, I think they're all called file 200, if I remember correctly. So grab 200, and then uh, test if f is equal to x, and if true, jump to found. Otherwise, drop the file, link minus 1. Oh, whoops. Drop the file, link minus one, enter in. But hang on a minute, I just want to like, see if we can get through to here. Oh yeah, no we can. We can't get through to here is the problem. So let's see if our timing works. Okay, okay, so they're all file 200s and they're locked. Damn it, okay, so we can't take them out of the host. So how do we make a copy then? How do I make a copy? If I can't take it out of the host, uh, oh my god. Oh my god. I think I know how to do it. Oh, that's it. No, no, there's no room. Yes, there is, but this is just the stupid. Oh, hey, this is going to be the stupid. Oh, yeah, like I said, that activity score is just going to get wrecked on this one, just straight up. Because what we need to do is create a file out here. <laughs> Create a new file, and we're going to do this one word at a time. Go in here, grab a word, come back out, paste the word. Go in there, grab a word, come out. Oh my god. At least they're all called 200. So at least this bit kind of works, and we can kind of like run through this a bunch, which is nice. Okay. But hang on, is this going to have time to come back and shoot? Yes, it is. Cool. Sweet. Okay. Without setting off any alarms. Right. So it grabs the file. Tests. Doesn't. Drops. Links minus one. Cool. All right. 
and no alarms went off. Nice. So what we're going to do then is we're going to do this. We're going to link. We do this. So and then we link 802. Do the thing. Link 803 and do the thing. Link 804 and do the thing. And if at this point it's still not in here, then we need to um, like go back and do a second round of lock picking. Um, yeah. So that's that's uh that's okay. So this is just like um, search for file in layer one. I'll search for file. Okay. Uh, search in lock one. And we'll call this one lock one and lock two. I think is like yeah. So that's what this is doing. Okay, but if it can't find it after this, <clears throat> we need to go link one, minus one, minus one, link minus one, uh, link minus one. In fact, if I'm gonna do that, I'm just gonna go, and that's three times, yeah, okay. So we're gonna do this, we're gonna make this a rep, rep three, link minus one, at end. and we'll just do that. Okay, so then, and then when it comes back to here, uh, it, it it needs to jump into another lock loop, doesn't it? Yeah. So it'll need to jump into. Um, but okay, so we'll go found one. Is that we'll actually call this? So this is found one. Yeah. Um. Does it need to? Could it not be the same? If I can come out here. Well, I mean, even if I have to grab it, like one word at a time because I would I'd have to grab it one word at a time and come back into here and communicate it actually is what I've got to do mm-hmm mm-hmm yeah so mm, no I need to found one to found two because I still need that because I need to work out how far in I'm going to do it yeah okay so we still need to call it found one dang it oh this is not going to be pleasant Okay, otherwise, um, so we'll do found, but if we don't do that, then we're going to have a mark uh, lock. Okay, so this is going to be, yeah, lock loop one, and this will be lock pick one. Yeah. <clears throat> lock loop two. Mark lock pick two. <sighs> okay. So let's copy that to here, um, and we're going to do this, and then we're going to copy um, uh, zero to x. We need to reset our x register, and then uh, jump into lock loop two. Yeah if we have to do all the stupidity and it's back here, which I assume it, in one of these tests, it's gonna be. It's gonna be back here. Mind one or more locks. See, yeah, that will be behind one or more. So if it's back here, then we're really boned. Okay. So we do that, we do that. Uh, we need to increase the number of noops because there's gonna be an extra step because it needs to link back twice. Okay, and then it needs to REPL lockpick 2, and lockpick 2 is going to link 800 uh, twice. Copy X to um, lock, and then link 800. And if it works, it's gonna work in exactly the same way as this one, where um, if we can get in, we need to do this three times. So at rep three, link minus one, and, and then it needs to kill. Okay. Um, and then we just need to do this a bunch of times. So we do that, eight, link 800, link 800, link 801, 802, 
and F to X, and if true, jump to found one. So we can just do, we can copy basically all of this into here. So search, what was I calling this? Search in lock two, in lock two, and do all of this. But we just need to add on an extra link, 800. We then need to do that, we need to do that, we need to do that. True, jump to found two. We need to do, yeah, yeah, I know, I know, I know. It's freaking out because it's like, oh, we got a found two. It's like, yeah, I know. Well, we're gonna do it in a minute. Okay. Drop it, go back to here, go to here, grab this, test of f equals x. Okay, at this point, because we've searched all of these, by the time we get into like this stuff, if it's not in there, then by process of elimination, it has to be in here. So I think if we just link 802, grab this, and just then just straight up, we'll just jump into found two. Jump into found two. Like if it is if it is that one, then like, again, we've searched literally everything else. So it's gotta be in there. And the file will be in one of these hosts. So yeah, by process of elimination, we can just skip. We don't have to do any testing. We can just go straight into this. Okay. So then how does the found step work? What happens when they find the file? Um, so when they find the file, they've got the file in their hand. Um, is the file the same every time? It kind of is. No, it is. It is exactly. Is it? Is it exactly the same file every time? It is exactly the same file every single time. So, what I'm thinking is we don't have to copy over every single thing. But I mean, why not? Kind of as well. Okay. Do this. Copy F to X. Jump to found. Okay, so um, oh boy. Uh, okay, okay. I think I can figure. Th I think I got this. All right. So, all right. So first of all, I forgot to do my whole exit thing. Um, like I forgot to do this because that's like super duper helpful that's all thus far basically and then yeah and then this is going to be well no that's because no, we kill it and then we jump into this and that is lockpick 2 is another whole separate exit again okay um, yeah so there's our separate exits that's nice I'm happy with that all right, and so we've done all of that. We do all of that. Okay, so yeah, we got to figure out found one. So what's found one going to do? I think the best way to do it is at this point, we know that the project name is unredacted, so we can just leave it. So what we can do is literally like drop the file, and then uh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this as a rep. So rep. Uh, let's see. So we got to link one, one, two, three times, three. No, because we need to figure out, oh, oh damn. Actually, no, no, no. So before we, yeah, no, no, drop the file and then host T. So we need the host file, we need the host name. We need the host name. Then we're gonna go back, link one, uh, end. Okay. And then, so we go back to here. And then we're going to create another exa. Um, and we're going to put that here. Uh, mark scribe. And I suppose scribe works exactly the same for both. So we can write one scribe and it will do everything. So make, and uh, okay, actually, you know what? Just for safety, we're gonna make them born local, just so that 
like all the communication is happening in here it is never happening at least nothing in here can overhear what's going on in here i don't I, i'm being paranoid but like we got some funky business going on here like i think it's safe to be paranoid at this point okay so they, so it'll make that make a new file and then it will uh copy m no at this point then it's going to um mark right loop okay so what it's going to do is copy m to f uh add one to x so we're actually going to maintain a counter and this is going to be this is kind of cool i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to make a seek counter so um the x is going to find the file and we already have the project name we already have the first word here so we're just going to come back and we're going to come back and we're going to send it the project name that's that or whatever the word we send back it doesn't matter then we're going to give them a number and that is the amount they're going to seek by in the file to get to the next word so that's zero remember so now we've gone from zero to one we're going to send them back one they're going to seek one and grab that and come back now is it is it would it be more efficient to just like grab all of this from in here and then wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute my dudes wait a minute oh, we don't have to grab the entire file we just have to grab the redacted bits oh peoples i'm getting some ideas i'm getting some ideas let's not make a new file that's stupid let's grab 300 so we're going to grab 300 then what we're going to do is we need to we need a reference we need this as a reference so um i need to because it's the same every time we're gonna go one so hang on that's zero well we need to go seek one two three so we need to seek three copy f to x so now we've got a redact oh wait a minute but does it change i don't know if it changes you know what we're gonna we'll test it we'll test it uh well because we know it's in here so this is just gonna come back Hang on a minute. Mark found one. It'll create scribe. Cool. Okay. So I'm not going to bother with found two just now because we know that in test one it's in here. So and I and honestly, what I want to test is how we're going to copy the data. Once we figure out how we can get the what data we need to get as well, then I can copy and paste for lock two and stuff and modify that accordingly. So okay. So we do that. Copy F to X, and then um. So what I'm going to do, because I want to compare if that and that is counted as the same thing. So then I'm going to seek again real quick. We're going to delete this later, but just for testing, we need to do this. We need to go another one, two, three, four, five, six. We need to go forward another six. And I want to test if F is equal to X. Are they equal? Because if they're not equal, then we have to grab the entire file, which is fine. But if they are equal, it means we only have to grab the redacted bits, which would be great. Okay. And uh, if uh, true, jump to, uh, you know what? I don't even care. I just, I just want, I just want to, I just want a true or false at this point. So let's get to here, which I know we can get to. Okay. Cool. So you've grabbed it you're gonna seek oh no that's wrong so we need to seek four okay that's fine seek four let's just move back but at least we know we can get to here at least we know this bit of it worked that's that's good to know okay so we seek four cool copy that oh it's a null value wait was it hold on what was it what what, what? oh wait what the heck happened hold on We get to here, you're holding, wait, who's holding the file? You're holding the file. You Right now, you've got, in your T register, you've got a value of null for some reason. Uh, okay, seek for, copy F to X. That caused it to blow up. Did it? No. No, you grabbed it. Oh, no, something else blew up for some reason. Okay. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Um, why? Are you, what are you doing? What the heck are you doing? Oh, you're running through lockpick too. Okay. Um, hang on a minute. Oh, right, because it, yeah, fell in. Okay, no, we're just gonna have it halt for now. Um, oh wait, no, we needed to. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna have it halt for now. Hold on, because that's that's that was screwing me up. Okay, hang on, let's go back into here. Okay, you, you, I want you, I want you out here. So you go here, you can grab that, go forward, is it six? Oh, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Hang on a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so if it's testing for character length, these should be, these will come out false as equivalences, but if it's just checking if they're redacted, they'll come out true. They came out false. Okay, damn it. So we have to grab the entire file. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. Okay, well that's fine. We have to grab the entire file. This is what you're gonna do. Okay, so, okay. So we're gonna make a new file. Then we go into the right loop. That's fine. This all still works. Um, it's just it's just more annoying than it would have been otherwise. Okay, so we do this and then uh, mark copy one. We need to make a loop for this. And we'll need to make an equivalent down here. Mark copy two. Oop, copy two. That will do things. Uh, but for right now, yeah. Um, so we'll just do this. So we copy M to F. We're gonna add one to X. And then we're gonna copy, <coughs> copy what's in our X register to M. Um, we need to do a test, actually. We need to do a test. So we're not gonna copy M to F, we're gonna copy M to T. Uh, and, cause we need to check if we are at the end of our file, basically. Cause we don't know where the end of the file is anymore. We only know. Wait a minute. Uh, we could find out. We could build a counter out of this. No, 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 no. This is easier. No, 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 no. Because that, mean, that's, that means we've got to spend a whole bunch of cycles just building a counter when we don't need to. When we don't need to. Okay. So, uh, let's see. So, we do that. Copy M to T. Okay. Uh, and we're going to check if it is... Uh, if it's a zero. Because I don't think we'll ever get a zero. No, we won't. No. Look, look at all the... Look at the redacted words, none of them are one character long. So we can just do this, false, jump to, end. And uh, so, mark, end. Okay, but otherwise, add one to X, copy X to M, and then that can like go off and get another word. Uh, and in the meantime, we're gonna copy T to F, and then jump back into our right loop. So that can kind of just happen in parallel, which is nice. Okay, uh, yeah, so that can do that, and then that can just do that, and then we can go back and we can start our little song and dance all over again. Okay, cool. Uh, and then end, we will, um, I don't know what we're gonna do at the end. I haven't gotten that far through. Let's get through, let's, let's write this, this out for, for uh, found first. Okay, so you're gonna do that. You're gonna do that. You're gonna go into here. Um, <clears throat> you're gonna do that. Uh, you're gonna create a scribe. Then you are going to go in a loop. So you're gonna copy what's in your X register over to the M register. Then you are, um, I found one. You know what? We'll just do this. We'll just do it for safety. Well, no, no, because we know it's the project name. We know it's the project name. We already know that. So we're not going to, I'm not going to do that a bunch of times. We'll just have the loop do it because that's safer. Yeah. Copy X to M. And then you're going to copy, uh, copy M to X. 
right? Okay, and then you're gonna link 800 twice. And then you are going to link T, because remember in our T register is uh, the uh, file host. So then you'll do that, and that'll take us to wherever it is. Then you'll grab 200, then you'll seek by the value of X, which we just grabbed, and that's uh, our seek value. And then you will uh, copy F to X, uh, and you, well, actually, hold on a minute. No, no. seek X, test EOF. If true, jump to um, uh, 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 end file. Um, but otherwise, which we haven't got, and it's going to freak out. Yeah, mark end file. We'll have to do that. Um, actually, end file is has to be an end file one and two because uh, it still has to like move back. Um, yeah. Okay. So, well, do they have to? Could we put it in a loop? Could we? Could we make it loop through and just go like, you know? We could have it link a minimum number of times, which is going to be like three is our minimum, right? So we have to go like one, two, three at a minimum. And then we'll do a kill. So instead of having a zero, we'll just shoot the scribe. But if we shoot the scribe, does that delete the file? Or does it make it drop? No, 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 it makes it drop the file. Yeah, remember we did, we did this before. Yeah, yeah, so it'll make it drop the file. We actually, you know what? Yeah, that's how we're going to do it. We're going to make an end file and then we'll make it loop and then it'll try and link. We'll have it link minus one again. It'll error out and it'll just drop and it's fine. Yeah. Okay. So end file. So actually then we don't need this to check if it's at the end of a file. It can just, we can just do this all the live long day. We can make that simple. And this is end file right here. Okay. Yeah, that's how we'll do that. So once we've reached the end of the file, we will link minus one. Actually, we're gonna, I'll make this a rep. Uh, rep three times. Link minus one, end. Then you're gonna kill. And then you're gonna link Minus one again. Because I think if I do a kill in here, nothing will happen. I hope, I hope, I hope. Or I don't know. I don't know if... Can I... Hang on a minute. Uh, you may not... You may not use more than one exit, and you may not use the M register. So I think if I just hit kill, nothing's going to happen. Hopefully when it set off an alarm. But otherwise, we will link minus one and kill again. So that guarantees that, like, either this one will get to here and do a shoot and then go here and shoot. Or it goes, well, this one goes all the way here, does a shoot, and then errors out. Yeah, okay. And this can just loop all the live long day. That's great. Without doing any testing, it doesn't have to muck around with any of that. It can just do that. Cool, okay. So, all right. Um, okay. Otherwise, if we're not at the end of the file, we need to grab what's there into our X register. And then we need to do this uh, three times, link minus one, um, end, and then jump back. Okay, jump to copy one, copy one, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, no, hold on. Seek, it, grab 200, seek X, do this, do this, copy that, drop the file it's holding, because if it doesn't drop it, we're, we're kind of boned. Uh, then do this, then, yeah, okay, copy one, and then do, and then jump back into this, do it all again. Yes, okay, okay, now, this needs to happen in copy two, well, actually, found two and copy two are now kind of basically the same. So we need to do, oops, I'm going to, well, let's do them one at a time, though. So we're going to do this, copy Oh, bam. Oh, 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 that's a problem. Hang on a minute. If we do, if we do test EOF, um, we're in trouble. Okay, that's fine. Because we do this, host T, we'll put it back in the T register at this time. That's fine. Copy F to X. In fact, what I might do is I'm going to do that later. I'm going to do this, then drop this, 
post T and then we get out. Yeah, that now, okay, so that, that works now. Okay, that's cool. Grab this, put this in found two. And instead of repeating this three times, it has to repeat it four times to go one, two, three, four. Then it needs to do that. And then it goes into copy two and copy two is just like copy one. Cool, 145 out of 150. Holy jolly. Okay, so that's gonna be jumping to copy two. Uh, otherwise it is literally, okay, no, and that needs to be four as well. It needs to link back four times as well. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It is janky as, but we got it in on time. Hell, did we even, oh my God, we, okay. I have no idea if any of this works. Um, but if it does, this is going to be kind of wild. Okay, I'm going to let it run through, because we've got a few minutes before the end here. I doubt it. I doubt that I've actually nailed this. Um. This might be the Kleptomancer achievement. Maybe, maybe it wants us to, like, grab every single file. Maybe. I don't know. Alright, so now we gotta, we got to wait a while. We gotta wait a while because we're gonna yeah we're brute forcing this <laughs> um but at least the eggs is the name of the password we're entering which is pretty nice um yeah okay but like look at our activity score it's kind of ridiculous well our activity score is also uh no well yeah no it's kind of a ref at this stage it's a reflection of what the password is but yeah i don't know Okay, let's see. So it's gonna do all of this. All right, here we go. 436, we found it. Oh, and something blew up. Look at that. I knew something was gonna go wrong. I knew something was gonna go wrong. Okay, well, let's jump into, uh, okay. So where is it going wrong? So that's that. Hold on, let's go to found. We're gonna speed this up super fast. Okay, so we found it. Okay. We drop the file. Get the host. Oh! <gasps> oh! Oh, it's a null value! Because they're not named! Oh, of course! That's not gonna give us our link! Okay, okay. Who? Okay. Okay. Um. So we need to rethink how we get the link number. Is the thing. Yeah, we need to rethink that. We need to rethink that. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, we need to rethink that. That's going to be a problem. That is going to be a problem. I thought I was being clever. But then I realized that no, only one of them's got a host name and that's that one. Helipad. <sighs> okay. Ooh. Okay, well, we got pretty far through it. All we need to do, I mean, we've got a complete program at this point, okay? We've got a complete program. All we need to do is just figure out how do we get back to the file? Like, how do we get back into here? Because we gotta, we got to leave and come back. That's the only way this whole thing works. Um, but we'll just, we'll leave it there for today. Like we've got, we've made some pretty good progress. I was actually going to be really surprised if we got this done by the end of this stream, to be honest. I was like super duper surprised. I was like, there's no way that this is going to work. And it doesn't. And that's okay. We need to figure out how to get the link number. Um, and that means doing some maths and that means storing values. Uh, and that's going to be a problem because we're already using one of the values to make sure we find the actual file in the first place. So yeah, that's bad. That's bad. Um, 
Hmm. I mean, we could just we could just grab. We could just store a file in here temporarily, and then once we're at the end of the file, we just change up the way end file works uh, a little bit, and we just go like before. Instead of like going back a bunch, it just goes back. You know, one wipe, grab its file, wipe it, and then we just you know put it on on, on the rest of its merry way. Yeah. Okay, but anyway, thank you so much for uh, for joining me today. If you liked what you saw, please, you know, follow us here on Twitch. Follow us uh, on Twitter at Pint Party. That's the best way to get notified of when we're live, as well as following us on Twitch. But if you're interested in any of our other gimmicks as well, check us out on Instagram. I actually really have to change that to Twitter because, like, Twitter is, like, where we talk about Twitch stuff. I don't We don't do that on, on Instagram. So, oh, we do a little bit, but not much. Um, so I've got to change. I've got to make a point of changing that but anyway you can follow us there on instagram follow us on twitch all of this is linked down below as well by the way uh check us out on youtube as well again that's linked below if you're interested in like watching previous episodes of this like if you want to watch me like slam my head against the wall for like three streams on the cyber myth productions one um then yeah like by all means watch like you go go ahead and check out our previous video. Oh, like I do other puzzles as well. Like I mean, the first two levels in the bonus campaign, I literally like blitzed through. Like I just blitzed them. It was insane. I can't believe I was able to do both puzzles in half a stream. I thought they were going to be at least one stream, one full stream each, um, because they're the bonus campaign. I was like, oh, these are going to be like the extra hard levels, and they weren't. So, yeah, that was funny. Um, so check us out, check that out. Uh, you can also watch the VODs here on Twitch for two weeks before they go away, but their permanent home is always on on Twitch, as well as other VODs. So we've got, as well as our podcasts, actually, I should say. Um, so you can listen to our podcast every Tuesday. Uh, is a brand new episode on Spotify, iTunes, and everywhere you like to listen to podcasts. Uh, this week's episode was actually pretty good. Uh, we talk about science and economics and the way only way we know how, which is like, basically lots and lots of lowbrow humor it's a lot of bum and fart humor you know what i mean like if you're looking for something that's not as like intellectually stimulating as exapunks i mean exapunks it's a puzzle game right like it's a game that like you've actually got to like do some work to like get stuff done but if you're um if you're just like you know looking for to like relax and like listen to people kind of like laugh about stupid stuff by all means let's check out our podcast it's great um, you can subscribe subscribe and get it every week. It's great. It's fantastic. There'll be a new episode coming out next Tuesday as well. Um, I don't know what's in that episode yet. Usually by this point, I've got a pretty good idea of like what's in the episode. But for this one, I'm like, you know, still having to do a bit of research because that's just me as a producer. I suck. <laughs> uh, what else is there that I need to talk about? Oh, yes. What I'm on next. So I, so I, I might be on tomorrow. But I'm usually not. Like, if you check out the schedule down below, you'll see that I'm usually not on tomorrow. But I might come on tomorrow just, honestly, for a test stream. Like, if you see me live tomorrow, it'll be because I'm testing some stuff. I want to... Uh, and I won't be playing Exapunks either. Like, like I said, I'm going to do... I might do some stream testing tomorrow. Um, it just really depends on, like, my schedule and if I have time and stuff. Um, because usually we'll record Pint Party tomorrow. Um, but it just depends on how early I get up in the morning slash if recordings happen and things i've got to like get all that organized um otherwise the next like regularly scheduled stream is on sunday at 2 p.m i think what day is it today oh my god i'm losing track of the days it is friday okay yeah so it'll be it'll be it'll be sunday uh is when i'll be on next uh which is also my mom's birthday by the way so i'm gonna have to say happy birthday to my mom in fact i might have to cut the stream short on sunday just because um I'm gonna have to call my mum. It's her birthday. I gotta call her. I gotta say, hi, mum. Happy birthday. I love you. Like, I gotta do. I gotta do all that. I gotta do the gimmick, right? So, like, yeah, like, you know, get get off my case. Um, but I think, yeah. So that's everything. And like I said, if you're not from Australia, you don't know uh, Sunday 2 p.m. AEST. If you don't know what that is, click on the stream uh, link. Just click on the bleh, click on the schedule link down below. See schedule stream. See how I got confused. Click on the schedule link down below. And it ha it'll have my schedule in your time zone, which is absolutely fantastic. I love that feature of Twitch. I really do. But uh, with that, this has been Pint Party. Cheers. Cheers.